out from America to be here this weekend. Really appreciate it. He can tell you more about himself and his pharmaceutical company, is it? But I can. Welcome to Nimbin, boy. Well, I'd rather talk about how nice it is to be here and to meet all of these wonderful people that are here expressing freedom and the importance of really having a free society and changing the current paradigm of what's going on. And one of my efforts to do that is that we started a company called Cannabis Science. And what we're trying to do is to get cannabis extracts through the FDA in the United States so that anybody could go to any pharmacy in any state and with a doctor's prescription get medicine and have it covered by the healthcare system. So finally, I think the government should be paying for our pot instead of making us uh, victims of their crimes. You know, if you think about it, you can divide the world into two kinds of people. Those who feel so strongly about their beliefs that they're willing to put somebody else in jail because they dare to think differently. And then there are those who think how totally ridiculous and absurd that is. And the, the thing that's totally nuts is that it's all around this plant. Now, why is this plant so significant? You know, I try to educate people because by understanding why this plant is so significant, it empowers you. Instead of cowering to some degree because the government is saying this is so bad and they have all of these studies allegedly showing how bad it is, the reality is that the people in the government, the people who are making these laws and many of the people enforcing these laws, are what I call the primitive people, the backward-looking people. And they are that way because they're what I call endocannabinoid deficient. So I want to talk a little about that so you appreciate how significant, why cannabis is so significant to all of us. We all make marijuana-like compounds. They're called endocannabinoids, cannabis from within. And we use those compounds from the time of our conception until the time of our death. And to just show how, again, insane the current status is, it's in mother's milk. Can you imagine that the same kinds of compounds, it's not exactly chemically the same, but it has the same effects. In other words, the first thing a mother does when she has a kid is she gets the kid a little stone. It gives the kid the munchies, makes him start eating, it relaxes him from the trauma of childbirth, it protects its brain from having you know, been exposed to oxygen for the first time. So from cradle to grave, we're using cannabis every day. Every time every member of your government gets hungry, they get hungry because a little part of their brain makes some endocannabinoids that goes to another part of their brain and gives them the munchies. Everything that cannabis does is just amplifying effects of your endocannabinoid system. And what's so amazing is that the endocannabinoids that we make and how the plant touches on that system literally regulates everything in your body. So when you step back and you look at the consequences without going into all the details about how it regulates everything in your body, but think about age-related illnesses, cardiovascular disease, for example. Cannabis inhibits you know, arterial sclerosis. Cannabis protects your heart if you have a heart attack. If you look at the nervous system, it promotes nerve regeneration. It promotes making new connections. If you look at the immune system, it's involved in turning down the biochemistry that's responsible for all the autoimmune diseases. If you look at cancer, it literally kills a number of cancer cells. And this has not been appropriately scientifically verified. Why? Because the government, instead of spending their money to do studies to see how good it is, spends money to put us in jail. Yeah. 